Hello friends, my name is Kyle, Real Revelations Everywhere. This video is going to be a direct follow-up to the How to Become an Interesting Opponent video. And it really is directly in relation to that and the core of everything that I really wanted to address in its own video. It is how I really define the mindset of like what is really subconsciously required to maintain the ability to keep up with all of this other stuff because it really is like it's extremely frustrating to be just to lose <laughs> you know how else to say it but <laughs> believe it or not it's not fun losing i don't know if you picked up on that yet probably have i know it's not fun for me i know i fucking I've come a long way in my uh in my understanding of my supreme hatred for losing. It's uh born from a very unhealthy place. <laughs> and it really got believe it or not, it got even more unhealthy than that as I continued to lose frequently throughout my life. As don't we all. And it really just, you know, not like I'm fucking just cured of it. God, I fucking hate losing so fucking much. I <clears throat> hate how I feel about loss. Like losing not loss in general, the concept of loss, but when I fucking lose, man, that's like, wow, <laughs> fuck, I hate this feeling, huh? <laughs> like, but it's, it's such an important thing to recognize that it's, and it's really genuinely ironic how the best way to be the best version of yourself, I am convinced personally, is managing to become someone that actually, in a, in a sense, enjoys losing. Which is like, there's a fucking pretty ridiculous thing to say, right? But it really is like, it really is. You have to go all the way in to get out. You have to fucking almost enjoy losing. I mean, you should never want to be the one that's losing. You should understand why you should want to win. And not like, you want to win because it's winning is good. Winning makes the bad go away. Winning, uh, you won this time. Do it again. <laughs> if you don't know what that means, you need to go back and watch that last video because that really, really is something that I appreciate beyond belief. That is what I strive to move towards every day is just a deeper understanding of how much you grow from losing and the kind of person that it takes to enjoy it and to keep going and to understand that the process is constant consistency is key in that 
the highest highs and the lowest lows are so fucking brief. It really, like, unless you dwell and obsess yourself, you have to cling to that shit. And that is extremely unhealthy as well. You're If you're obsessing and clinging, you aren't processing and learning. You're holding it in and allowing it to destroy you from the inside out. You haven't learned from it. You cannot claim to. And it would be extremely disingenuous of you to do that. That is 100% your ego distracting you from what is actually occurring. And that is something to address always it really really is no matter how painful it is no matter what it is you cannot be feeding yourself the poison and i'm going to say that a thousand more times i hope you hear me say it every single time i hope you're listening when i say it not just hearing it that's not good enough gotta listen and at the same time the exact same time you have to do everything that you can to prevent losing while you maximize your appreciation for it and you just find that it may sound like i'm asking for you to have your cake and eat it too and that cake sounds like it's made of fucking diarrhea <laughs> trust me it's not that bad. It really isn't. If you are convincing yourself that that's what it tastes like, if that's all it sounds like, that is you convincing yourself of something that is not true. There's a way to consider it all. And it's the right way to be thinking about all of this stuff. It's that each individual person that you are playing with including yourself is a real person that deserves respect and appreciation until they prove otherwise and that you need to be very generous in terms of who doesn't deserve respect at the exact same time because you'll find it is far too easy to be extremely judgmental, to assume a bunch of things about people that are simply untrue, and then look at you. Now you're the fucking one being a fucking dickhead piece of shit for no reason. To someone that is just wrapped up in all of their own shit and not figuring out things for themselves. So you're going to allow someone else being a piece of shit to just automatically, boom, oh, let's fucking go. Dickhead time. Let's fucking get it. Absolutely not. That's not an option. When you actually give a shit about everyone else, as you should, because that's, as I will continue to explain, the mark of someone that is worth anything in the first place, intelligent, kind, caring, if you can't come close to figuring out any of that stuff, your words mean nothing your actions are detrimental you don't understand what is actually happening in real reality the reason that we are all still here is because we have worked together supremely above anything else what has happened the most throughout human history no matter what the fuck you think has gone on reading your little fucking dickhead history book full of, you know, bullshit annotations from people that weren't fucking there that have been lying. You know, whatever you want to fucking history is the story of the survivor, whatever version of that you like to repeat to yourself. That's not the case, because if that was the case, none of us would still be here. The baseline understanding that what has happened the most to the highest degree of success is that we have all worked together always, all the time. Every chance that we have gotten to successfully work together 
has always propelled us forward amongst the immense amount of grief and tragedy that we have all experienced individually and together regardless working together has trumped all of the fear that we have all ever come up with in the history of humanity we have persevered beyond that it will get better it is better now than it was then and it will continue to get better as long as we make it better and it starts up here believe it or not wow who would have thought who would have thought that us considering reconsidering our perspective of hold on wait a second well if everyone is just a dickhead piece of shit all the time then why the fuck are we all still here then why the fuck is this still happening oh oh well just wait you just wait oh it's gonna get it's getting worse and it's always gonna be worse and it's gonna continue to get worse and everything is fucking shit right now and always and it always has been nope you might have been made of baby shit this whole time but i'm not I've been having a fucking amongst the grief and tragedy and everything that comes with all of this. Same for everyone. I can concretely say, and I know for a fact that anyone that has actually spent any real amount of time around me while I was actually enjoying myself will be able to tell you with certainty I've been having a fucking pretty good goddamn time. And I've been making sure of that. And I've been trying very hard to make sure that that is the case. Because why would I want anything else? I don't enjoy being angry. There's, I've actually heard people say that they actually enjoy being angry. Which is, no, you don't enjoy that. Like, that doesn't put a real smile on your face. What, like, you're either lying to sound cool, because I don't know why you would think that's cool, but maybe you do. You might be like 11. Uh, or you've just never had like a real coherent thought move through your head at any point in your life, which is just disappointing to think about. That doesn't, that doesn't bring me happiness to consider that there are people that have never actually had a good thought pass through their head through their entire life but it happens it doesn't matter if you aren't trying to enjoy your time it really doesn't you haven't made anything of it it has amounted to nothing and if you aren't trying to grow and get better it, it's just there's nothing else to say there's nothing else to say. Why would you not want to? Like, and if you actually, if there is, first of all, I'm just address my two cents from a not licensed therapist of any kind, just someone that cares a whole fucking bunch and has really considered why someone would want to say something like that to someone in the situation that I found it to be conveyed in. Why they would want to say that in the first place, what they think that does for other people, and what they actually mean when they're saying it, what they are trying to convince themselves of when they tell other people that, you don't enjoy being angry. That's just the only thing that makes you actually feel like you're really here, which is extremely disappointing. And this is exactly what I'm trying to get at. If anger and frustration is the only thing that gets a rise out of you, that really fills you with something, a feeling, that's, you have cut yourself off from that capability. That is not happiness. That's not joy. That is not a good feeling. You have tricked yourself into thinking that which is really 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 gross really fucking disgusting to be completely honest and it's extremely detrimental 
and that feeling that you get when you fucking raise your voice and you say what you want to say and then you do whatever disgusting shit that you do afterwards, whatever that may be. It's pathetic. It's fucking pathetic and it's not happiness. And if you could feel happiness, just have there was whatever if if it's as like in that situation, I almost consider the fact that you might not be able to. That's not real happiness. There's no version of that that provides real happiness. That if it's not in a place of love, what you call happy isn't happy. That's not what other people feel. And that's dangerous. That's something to be addressed. Because it's only destructive. Exclusively only destructive. It does not allow for other people to grow. And you th oh, well, huh, let me catch you right there. Well, you know, there are a lot of people that really like tough coaching. And they really like, you know, being pushed in that way. And they really enjoy you know, that level of intensity, that's not hatred. That level of intensity and demand can be very constructive for a lot of people, and I've felt it constructive for myself at times. But when it is constructive, that person understands that it is coming from a good place. It's not just loud words and mean words and that provokes you the most and that is what pushes you to grind no you have to understand that where it's coming from is from a place of understanding and wanting to get the most out of you and that's just your relationship dynamic but that is a very very specific thing that has to be addressed in a very specific way that is not what i'm talking about there's hard coaching and there's tough love and then there's being a fucking piece of fucking shit. And those two things are very, very different. One never comes close to the other. And it's, sorry, the hatred is way down here. Let me put it under my fucking seat. Because it doesn't come anywhere close to tough love and real, powerful, intense, thought-provoking guidance that that can initiate. That's up here. That shit, when it works, and it works well, there's nothing else like it. But that's not what that is. That's hatred. That's anger. That's disgust. That's a volatility that is not useful. And it's pathetic. Bottom line, if you don't need to need to help people, you have not come close to the best version of yourself. I am personally convinced if there isn't a process running through your brain, consciously, subconsciously, or otherwise, whatever layer you find it works the best in, if there is not some thought being provoked on how your actions are affecting other people, and how you can make your version of what you're doing the best version of that thing for everyone else. It's not the best version of it. It simply isn't. And there are certain things that you only do for yourself. And there are certain things that are not for other people. And that is for you to decide how good that is. That's fine. That's also not what I'm talking about. But when you are in a team environment and your first thought about everything that you're doing, maybe not first, or if you are not really considering how you are affecting everyone else on the team with each one of your actions, you're not doing as good as you can. It is that simple. It is that simple. And it is every single thing that you do you will find that there is so much that you can do in between everything else that can get so much done for everyone else and then guess what you do all of this stuff and it's just oh my god thank you so much for doing that. wait a minute 
Look at that. Now I can help you all of a sudden. Oh my, look at that. And why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I? Look, you do Thank you so much. Is there anything that I can get for you two? Like, come on, please, please, please. Can I please? How beautiful is that? How simple is that? No, don't, don't, don't trust me. It's that simple. It really is. Oh, well, no, it's all these other people. Okay, so who are those people? Well, who are you? What are you doing? What are you doing for them? Why are you doing it for them? Consider all that. Why are you? Okay, so if it's not, then why? what are you doing in the first place? Why are you wrapped up in that shit? And you'll find that rabbit hole goes all the way down. And you will ask yourself that question about every single person in your life. And you have to be objective about all of it. You have to understand their intentions. And by doing that, you have to couple what they have shown you with what they have said and how it has actually gone. They have to prove to you what they're saying. Okay? They have to prove it. Nobody gets to just keep saying all of this shit. You have to protect yourself from that. I don't care who that person is. I don't care if they're a family member. I don't care. You have to protect yourself. There are no shortage of stories and songs and poems and art forms of every fucking kind that are all about how the people that you brought closest were the ones that fucked you over the hardest. And that is just, it's a sad reality that we don't get to choose our family. And some of us get really lucky. I know I did. That's the kind of stuff that luck actually affects. You don't get to choose whose family you're a part of, but you definitely, absolutely get to choose how you interact with your family. And it's not all good. Unfortunately, it's not always going to be good. But that can't stop you either. It's that simple. It really is. And it's unfortunate, and it's going to be hard. But those lessons are going to mean the most to you. That not everybody gets to stick around. That... At some point, you have to draw the line and recognize when other people aren't being good people to you, you cannot allow that to happen. And it's very unfortunate. And I would not blame you if you tried everything and then some to make sure that it doesn't happen. But when that time comes, when you have to recognize that there is no other option, that they simply are not good for you to be around. Not making that choice is 10 times worse than letting it fucking fester and rot. Amputation is hard, but it saves lives. Unfortunate matter of fact. And it's gonna take a lot going to take a lot of personal growth and it's going to take a lot of willpower it's going to take a lot of gumption to address those situations in your life i completely understanding if you feel like that's not something that you can address right now but it is something that you have to mitigate that damage to the best of your ability or it's just going to keep fucking slicing you open just rolling around on it and it is just gutting you. It's, it's unacceptable. I've used that word a lot recently. And it really is. You cannot tolerate the unacceptable. You can't let other ba bad teammates drag you down. And the most unacceptable thing above all else is you being a bad teammate yourself. And not doing anything to get better mitigate it and you fucking wonder why other people don't want to be around you i would take that to heart use it to be better and just keep moving forward keep working on yourself as is the past it's happened has happened how you bounce back how you 
make your way once you have stood back up is 10 times as important as how you fell down. It doesn't matter nearly as much as the bounce back. Because you're going to fall down. You already have, I'm sure. Maybe not nearly as hard as you think is possible either. Trust me, rock bottom fucking hurts. Especially when it's your face. And that's something that you uh, may as well be ready for to the best of your degree, but at the same time, you don't want to just only expect that that is always the case. It's, it's just weird. This ironic balancing act that you do in all of these situations and these difficult things that I'm asking of you really will stretch you in very interesting ways. I ask you to uh, enjoy losing <laughs> and look forward to grief and all of this shit. But once you actually start doing it, the difference is undeniable. And anyone that is denying anything that I've ever said on this to do with this channel, fucking please, I would love to fucking hear what you have to say. <laughs> I fucking can't wait. I would love to hear it. Let's see. Let's see. Come on. Let's hear it. It's just fucking excuses. <laughs> There's so much to get done. There's so much fun stuff to do. There is so much to see. There is so, so far to go. I just can't imagine not being someone that looks forward to it. It blows my mind, to be completely honest. I don't understand how people can go so long and so far without hitting a point where it all becomes completely 110% unacceptable to the point that they have to make just every change necessary. But, you know, that's other pe other people's lives <clears throat> for other people to decide. I only control what I control. And I gain a little more control every day. And I hope that all the people around me that I surround myself with that actually care to listen to what I have to say appreciate what I have told them. And I hope just keep growing with them and if you would enjoy that with me i would love to enjoy that with you just keep working hard just continue to excel i think you have probably been doing a much better job of things than you realize and i think cutting yourself a little slack is uh gonna go a long way just be proud it really uh makes a big difference when you wake up and you know that you are proud of yourself. That's a different kind of day. Trust me. And as always, you know, gotta be safe, stay dangerous, take it easy. Just be thoughtful continue to care other people have a lot to them that you can't see yet that they aren't willing to show you and it really is startling almost that is just one day you just have a conversation with someone and then all of a sudden Holy fucking shit. How did I not know that about you? Are you kidding me? In your relationship. 
is overhauled in an instant. The communication changes completely how you carry yourself around the people that you enjoy changes completely and you actually learn about yourself. It's another way to provoke more growth, to learn more about other people. Who'd have thought? Thank you. Thank you for being yourself. Have a good day.